It's Wednesday, 18 October, and it's time for an Orville update. Just got off the phone with the Orville Press Conference. Conference. Thank you, Julianne. <laughs> and it looks like they're on track. They're on track to get this thing wrapped up to have a 100,000 CFS capable spillway in place by 1 November. In The big news is they're down to just 36 feet, 36 feet to go on that RCC fill to get the RCC to match the upper spillway. They've got 100% of all the anchor bolts in. They've got about 90% of all the structural concrete in place. They hope to get that 36 feet of RCC done next week and then leave the last week to put in the hardened special secret sauce, the, the top 12 inches of RCC that will uh, harden the RCC portion of the spillway. Uh, we're still waiting for the BOC report, not till November, on the final forensic report as to the cause of the Orville spillway failure, but we kind of, we've talked about that quite a bit on this channel. Um, the current lake level is at 700 feet and the outflows are about 25 to 3500 CFS. It takes a minimum of about 3500 CFS for the ecology of the Feather River downstream to stay healthy. So the concern now is uh, we got to get some rain because at 700 feet and 3500 out inflows are maybe 1200 to 2500 CFS, the lake's going to continue to slowly drain. So we need to get some rains in here to balance the lake. And more importantly, we've got the plan, the new plan for the for this winter of how they're going to operate the Oroville complex. All new numbers based on the spillway failure. It's a good looking plan. There's no redacted information on the plan and so we'll do a little whiteboard review with my lovely assistant Julianne here of, of how they're going to operate the Oroville spillway this winter and it'll go a long way towards explaining how Oroville works in general and we'll have all the numbers for you as far as elevations of different components at Oroville. Shall we go to the whiteboard children? Yes. Welcome to our whiteboard discussion for the 2017-2018 plan for the operation of Oroville Dam. This is a cutaway view of the Oroville Dam and Julianne here will point out to some of the various features that we're looking at. The top of the Oroville Dam at 922 feet, remember this is an earth filled dam and cannot be overtopped under any circumstances so this entire structure is designed to save that dam. The top of the emergency spillway at 901 feet, the top of the OG weir. The bottom of the main spillway, flood control outlet spillway gates, 813 feet. The bottom of the inlet structure to the Hyatt power plant is approximately 640 feet. That feeds water into the six turbines of the Hyatt power plant. <clears throat> right now there are five turbines operational. The sixth one is still um, forecast to be dropped back into position right around December. But this entire plan for this year is based on the operation of just five operating turbines and rotating those turbines through so that they're not running all five turbines wide open um, without a break. They will be giving these turbines a break and that should yield about 14,700 CFS flow capability out of the Hyatt power plant and this will be the main source for controlling the water level at Oroville this year. And at the bottom, the very bottom of the lake is the river valve outlet system all the way down to 340 feet and that's through the original um, tunnels that were used, diversion tunnels that were used to cut in to, to create this Oroville dam to begin with.
the original plan, the old plan for Oroville, what they've always used for the last, well, 49 years or so, was to maintain a flood control elevation of 850 feet. That was the elevation of the lake when all this story broke, when the spillway busted uh, back last February, uh, 850 feet. This year, the new plan is to knock 50 feet off of that. The new plan the, is to maintain Oroville Lake at 800 feet. Now there's some more details associated with that and we'll go over those next. <laughs> with the new plan of 800 foot field elevation, reservoir elevation, that will keep the top of the water below the spillway gates by about 13 feet. Right now, in November, they got the lake at 700 feet, and it's going to continue to go down if we don't get any rain until we get, uh, uh, as they need to maintain the 3,500 or so CFS out to maintain the health of the Feather River. But between November and March, they want to maintain this reservoir elevation between about 725 feet and 800 feet. By April and May, this is typically towards the end of the season when they start to allow the reservoir to fill up for maximum water conservation. This year, they want to bring that level up to about 830 feet. And by 15 April, they're going to reevaluate all the hydrology, the snowpack in the Sierras, and then they'll get a final gate closing plan for Orville Reservoir for the end of this season. So they don't have that plan in place yet. They gotta see how this season plays out with the water and the hydrology to determine at what elevation will they allow Orville to top out at this spring. In order to maintain this schedule, the plan is to run the Hyatt power plant between 10,000 and 14,700 CFS throughout the year. Again, planning on five turbines, that'll provide the 14,700 CFS. In 49 years of operation, this spillway has been used about 25 seasons. So half the time, they don't even use the spillway at all. And only three years of those last 49 has spillway um, flows ever exceeded 100,000 CFS. The max they ever want to pour out of this spillway for protection of folks downstream is about 150,000 CFS. Remember, this year the spillway will be designed to handle 100,000 CFS. Next year, the final design will be a design capacity of 270,000 CFS. Again, do not confuse that number with the operational requirement of releasing no more than 160,000, 150,000 CFS to maintain the integrity of the lev levees down below. Another feature of this plan, hopefully, will be that they will have much better control of the reservoir and they will be able to minimize the sudden increases and decreases in water release levels, which so very detrimentally affect folks downstream. Remember, if you have a sudden release of water and raise the water up in the Feather River to to a much higher level and then suddenly cut that off and lower that level, those water soaked levees will just collapse into the Feather River, causing lots of damage downstream. Uh, let's see, I think we got everything covered here. So again, to summarize, the old plan of flood control elevation of 850 feet has now been reduced this year to 800 feet. So that will be the, the flood control level that they will seek to maintain Oroville at this year. And if that's maintained, there'll be no need to use the new spillway at all this year. However, if they need to, they will use it. The emergency spillway will not be used. Now, one interesting thing that did come out of today's conference is water managers are having traditionally having been having trouble meeting 100% of the demands for agriculture on a good year. So this is going to represent an even greater challenge to getting the water deliveries that agriculture needs in California. The short answer is we need more water storage capability in California. 
After this next season, 2017-2018, a whole new plan for the operation of Oroville is in the works, and that's taking inputs from all the folks up and downstream to determine how they're going to operate Oroville Dam in the future. In other words, this whole sequence of events, this whole series of events of what, hap what has happened to Oroville Spillway is rewriting the books as to how Oroville Spillway will be operated in the future. More water! Yes, to meet California's ever-increasing water demands to feed a population that far exceeds our water storage capacity. And I'll post a link to the plan for the 2017-2018 water season here at Orville. Here's the latest DWR footage published on 17 October, showing the 90% of the structural concrete in place. And now you're looking at the RCC and you're thinking, what the heck are they doing tearing up the RCC? We just got it in place. Well, this is how they're setting up for the green cut or the, the application of the hardened last 12 inches of RCC. So they're going to rip up some of these sections just a few inches deep here and do a green cut where they super soak this this area with water, reliven the concrete so that they can create a, uh, a, 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 tight, <clears throat> a tight bond between the existing RCC and the new hardened layer without creating a cold joint. Now down here on the lower part of the spillway, they're connecting the structural, the new structural concrete walls to the existing short section of concrete wall remaining around the dentates or the energy dissipating blocks at the end of the spillway. Finishing up the grout on the interior of the RCC walls and they'll be removing this scaffolding shortly. And finally placing the last 36 feet of RCC to connect the RCC section to the upper spillway. Again, this will be done this week and the hardening layer will be the last bit to go in the last week of October. So hit like and subscribe if this has given you a better understanding of the plan of how to operate the Oroville complex for the 2017-18 season. And we gave DWR a fair warning. We're coming down one November to see if this spillway is going to be ready to roll.